This is Dan Dix here reporting for Press for Truth. If you guys happen to have missed the events that transpired over the weekend, I'm going to fill you in today on exactly what went down. Yesterday, there was a huge Black Lives Matter rally that took place in Vancouver where thousands of people went to attend this event. And when I first saw it, I knew I wanted to go there in support, in solidarity, because what happened to George Floyd is an absolute atrocity. And what happened to Regis Korczynski Paquette is extremely questionable and needs to be brought to the attention of the Canadian people. So I figured with my over a quarter million subscribers on YouTube and tens of thousands of followers on Twitter, I would go to this event in solidarity in order to help them promote their message to the world. I started out my day by doing a live stream um, that I titled Justice for George Floyd and Regis Korczynski Paquette Rally live with PFT. And in that video, I quite literally just played their speeches. Raw, unedited, I didn't even chime in with any of my own commentary. I really just wanted to show the world what these people had to say about some of the events that were transpiring around the world. I then put out another video that was titled Vancouver Wants Justice for Regis Korczynski Paquette. And that's because I saw a young woman being incredibly passionate about this and she wanted to get up on the mic and talk and they allowed her to do so. So that is something I also wanted to bring to the world. I then put out a video on Twitter honoring the minute of silence that they had for George Floyd. That particular video got almost 40,000 views on Twitter and um, I was there helping them get their message out about the larger issue of police brutality in Canada. On, on that note guys, I have actually made a documentary film about the police state in Canada. I would say THE documentary film about the police state in Canada. I challenge you to find another film that's better than mine that documents the police state in Canada. My film is called Into the Fire. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this is to provide a little bit of context into why I was there and what my intentions were with going to this rally. <clears throat> now having said that, after listening to a number of the speeches, putting out a few videos already promoting the event, I all of a sudden heard a commotion going on over by where there was a police line. So I went over there to check it out. And that's when one particular individual singled me out, pointed at me and said, this guy is a bad man, this is a bad man, he needs to leave. This guy's a bad dude. This guy's a bad guy. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, I'm being surrounded all of a sudden by a bunch of people saying I'm a bad guy. And as you saw there, I was quickly uh, surrounded by a gaggle of people and it, it, in fact I ended up being surrounded by what turned out to be mostly angry white female feminists. Stop I mean, look at them. Stop filming. You cannot stop filming. Why? Stop filming. Why? Stop filming. <laughs> Why? Get out of here. No. Filming. Why would I stop, stop filming? filming? Why? What have I done? Black lives matter. Why? Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Yeah, I know. I know. So at this point, I'm rather shocked and, and surprised. So I inquire as to this serious accusation. They're calling me a Nazi and a white supremacist. So I said, can you show me any evidence? Show me where I've ever said anything or done anything that would make you think that I'm a Nazi or a white supremacist. Get out of here, you Nazi piece of shit. How do you figure I'm a Nazi? What have I done or said? He's not touching you. He's not what do you mean I'm not supporting it? What have I ever said or done that makes you think I'm a Nazi? What have you got? What have I said or done? Why? Now the reason I think uh, to a large extent on why they couldn't provide any kind of uh, background into why they think I'm a racist is because the majority of these people don't even know who I am, as is provable by this clip. Where do you live? 
What's your name? Where do you work? Press for Truth, Dan Dix. He's an independent journalist. No, he's not. Yeah, you guys can leave me alone. No, he's not. Do not touch me again. Go up that way. You're gonna walk to the <laughs> end. You can walk yeah. right here, just, sir. All right. We can walk you right out, sir. No, yeah, I'm not going anywhere, no, dude. No, what? Watch me. You're gonna be going somewhere, pal. So what we're seeing here is groupthink mentality. This is the collective mind think of these particular uh, type of people, where their leader pointed me out as a bad man and they all quickly jumped on it not knowing anything about me not knowing who I am but they decided it would be okay to surround me harass me physically push me around because they were told that I'm a Nazi you are a disgusting excuse Why? for a fucking human what have I done you are a racist hey, hey, hey. man one girl even had the nerve to say that they are standing up for human rights while completely obliterating my human rights. We need you out of here, sir. Why? This is about people's rights to be human. Please. Sir. Please. Another woman chimed in and said, you can't film these people. They, you, you didn't get their consent to film them while all of them have their cameras on me. Guys, I'm on your side. I don't know why you're uh, thinking I'm doing anything bad here. Yeah, yeah you're, you don't have their consent for their image. Please turn around and walk away now. Yeah, thank I don't, you. I don't need their turn consent. Around. Yes, it's we a do. public space. I don't need anyone's consent. To turn around and walk away, thank you. <laughs> One other thing that happened that I found to be quite comical was when Laser Boy came in to interject and he had his his little fist of lasers. Even a police officer had to tell him to get his hand out of his face. Oh, oh, I'm going to go somewhere else, okay? Oh, that's I mean, put your hand away from me. Okay, is that fair? And he wasn't the only one being like that. There was another uh, individual who came up to me, again, not knowing who I am, who started poking and pushing me while saying, you're not social distancing. Stay back six feet. Stay back six feet. As he poked and prodded at me. The cop had to chime in and said, you can't do that. Stop Can pushing you, me, dude. No, but where are you going? It's social distance. Stop touching me. Where are you going? Where are you going? Why like, social you distance. Out? You said you six were going to No, 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 no. He's touching me. No yeah, okay. That's, that's an actual going? assault when you're touching people. Yeah. Yeah. Can where are you going? So, eventually, uh, the one police officer who was kind of dealing with the situation, did everything he could to de-escalate it by having myself removed from the event. Uh, I was essentially escorted away from the police. They told me it's, you know, essentially for my safety to avoid any kind of, a, of an assault, but really my, my right, my freedom of speech was violated because they took the side of these thugs who didn't even know who I was and pushed me out of that rally for absolutely no good reason. Now, later, <laughs> when I got home, funnily enough, I found this tweet from the Anti-Hate Canada group, and it said, journalists, writers, and organizers, please pitch us op-eds and stories about the George Floyd demonstrations with a Canadian angle. We pay our contributors quickly, DMs open. So I chimed in by saying, Sure, I was mobbed and attacked by a group of angry leftists who don't even know who I am or anything about me. Their collective mob mentality kicked in because their dear leader said, I'm a bad man. So they jumped into attack mode like a pack of hyenas. Will you run that story? And then I was subsequently blocked by anti-hate Canada. So again, I chimed in and said, this is what pointing out their hypocrisy gets you. Much like in real life, they're not capable of a rational discussion. They just crumble, block, and delete. Pathetic losers. Now, admittedly, it's a little out of my character to call people names, but I, admittedly, I was rather frustrated with the way I was being treated by these people, especially when my true intention there, as was evident by my earlier coverage that day, was to be there in solidarity for their cause and to raise awareness about their issue. But this goes to show a very serious problem 
that we have here in Canada, and in particular with those who are tied into Antifa, Black Bloc, or any of these mostly faceless organizations that appear to be fighting against fascism, they often become the very things that they say they're fighting against, as was the case with me yesterday in Vancouver. So, the bottom line is, guys, I, I am okay. Nothing physically harmed me. Um, they were pushing and poking and, you know, uh, <laughs> surrounding me and, and intimidating me, but that doesn't scare me. And I'm not going to allow that to stop me from continuing to do the work that I do because I know what my intentions are. I know I'm in this for the right thing and I hope the viewers of this channel understand that too. And maybe, <laughs> maybe we could bring these people around because again, I'm there for them, you know. I'm there to support their cause. But unfortunately, they just didn't see it that way. So, I just wanted to let you guys know what I had to deal with there yesterday, guys. If you appreciate my efforts to, to go into these types of scenarios, putting myself in danger. I mean, last time I went to one of these things, they clocked me in the back of the head with a blunt object, which gave me a raging headache for the rest of the day. Um, thankfully, nothing like that happened again here. But as I said, I'm not going to allow it to scare me into not going anymore. So if this is something that you guys support, please share my videos. Click the thumbs up button when you come across one of them. And we also do need your financial support. If you can afford to financially support Press for Truth, please do so. I mean, we are heavily shadow banned. We are completely demonetized here on YouTube. And I'm putting myself literally in danger on the front lines to help these people and you bring the truth of the things that are happening in the world to the world. So it's quite sad that that's how things turned out yesterday. I hope if any of those people who attack me are watching this video, they realize I'm not the enemy, guys. I was there to help you. And you turned on me because of mob mentality groupthink. You didn't even know who I was, but you attacked me and pushed me out. Quite sad that the cancel culture has gotten to the point where journalists who are in support of their cause can be ousted and the police wouldn't make me leave. So once again, guys, I need your support moving forward. If you appreciate my efforts to bring you this information, please click that thumbs up button, share this video, don't forget to check the links on the screen or in the description below if you do want to su financially support my efforts to continue to do this work. And I will continue to do it, God willing. So if that's something you appreciate, guys, please keep up your continued support for my efforts here at Press for Truth. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. That's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to have more video reports coming soon, God willing. This is Dan Dix reporting for Press for Truth. We all want truth. The truth will set you free.